Digoxin is a very important medication, both in the exam and in the clinical practice. You will see it everywhere all the time. To simply understand the mechanism of action, let's look at this diagram. Imagine that this is a heart muscle. And like all muscles, we have a sodium-potassium ATPase. And this transporter takes potassium from the outside and put it into the cell and takes sodium from the inside and excretes it. So potassium goes in and sodium goes out. Normally this transporter keeps working all the time to maintain a high potassium inside the cell and low sodium inside the cell. And on the other side we have another transporter that only works if the cell has low sodium. It's called the sodium calcium exchanger. It exchanges calcium with sodium. So calcium goes out and sodium goes in to increase the intracellular sodium. However, if there is ever a scenario where the cell already has too much sodium, there will be no sense to activate this transporter. And so if the cell has a lot of sodium or enough sodium, the calcium-sodium exchanger will be inhibited. And that's exactly how digoxin works. It inhibits the sodium-potassium ATPase, which normally expels sodium, and so sodium concentration will rise and the calcium-sodium exchanger will be inhibited. And of course, this will result in accumulation of calcium, because now calcium will not be exchanged with sodium. And of course, more calcium means more contraction. And that's how digoxin increases the contraction. Digoxin also stimulates the vagus nerve, which innervates the SA node, and this results in decreased heart rate. Remember that digoxin stops the sodium-potassium exchanger, so potassium will not go in and will accumulate in the blood, and this results in hyperkalemia. And this is a very poor prognostic factor. And just like all hyperkalemias, this can result in arrhythmia. And the first thing to do when a patient has hyperkalemia is to give the patient calcium gluconate to stabilize the heart. But you cannot do that with digoxin toxicity or digoxin-related hyperkalemia. The conditions causing digoxin toxicity or anything that increases digoxin levels in the blood, mainly renal failure, because that's how digoxin is excreted, hypokalemia, or any other drug that displaces digoxin. To remember the antidote of digoxin toxicity, which is very important for exams, I remember the acronym MAPS, so magnesium, anti-digoxin antibodies, potassium normalization, and synchronizer, like a pacemaker. The contraindicated medications with dioxin are verapamil because verapamil causes AV block and this will result in bradycardia. And dioxin already causes bradycardia, so this will result in further decrease of the heart rate. Amidaron, and this can cause visual defects if the patient uses amidaron with dioxin, and quinidipine. All three of these medications can decrease the clearance of dioxin and cause dioxin toxicity. Digoxin can also have some cholinergic side effects, like nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Use the link below to get access to the full cardiology medications course. The course includes all heart medications, their mechanism of action, the side effects, and the important notes. With every lecture in the course, you will have the external links referencing the updated guidelines so that you stay up to date and you don't miss anything. You can also test your knowledge by answering the MCQs and the quizzes included in the course. It's an excellent way to stay updated and to remember everything. Thank you for watching.